Hey guys, I'm Lindsay. I'm Scott. And this is a special HLJ sneak peek for you. Yep. Ta da! We teased it the other day, but we've got the brand new version of Akuyaku Ichigo from Asuka and Plots. And I can see the question marks popping up over people's heads <laughs> right now. Uh, what that is, yeah. Are you familiar with Akuyaku Ichigo? I was not until a, you popped in the room. Really? <laughs> and I stole the kit from you. Akuyaku Ichigo. Well, it's a tank. It's a tank. It's a very odd looking tank. Uh, in Japanese, Akuyaku means uh, like bad guy, basically. Uh, as in the movies, bad guy. It's a generic term that just means like the bad guy. So it's like bad guy number one. Um, so most of this, uh, I think our site and most people, they don't actually bother to translate it. They just say Akuyaku uh, as it is. But it's bad guy number one tank. And it's a fictional tank that has been rendered in, you know, as a plastic model. You know, with good old plastic model type parts here. Weeha, you gotta build it, you gotta paint it. Um, and a lot of people might be scratching their heads and going, why in the world is a fictional cartoony tank, why in the heck would you make a plastic model of something like this? I just noticed this right off the bat when you showed me the box. Mm. There's a little pig character on the side here, and it looks an awful lot like a Studio Ghibli character. Yeah, it sure does. If, yeah, I think this is, this is the little pig that, that she's talking about here. Um, yeah, the, and to make it even more weird, this has never appeared in any anime or anything. Okay? Really? And to, even though that it's got such low street cred, it actually got a whole kit. Okay, so we've teased it enough. So I'll spill the beans here. This tank was designed by none other than Hayao Miyazaki, the super, super famous um, Japanese animator who, if you've ever watched anime movies at all, you should know who I'm talking about. So I won't bother to introduce him because he's, he's that famous. But he hasn't always been that famous. Uh, way back in 1984, when Miyazaki was uh, working on Nausicaa and doing some other uh, directoral work before he was as famous as he is now. Oh, like the manga? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nausicaa, the, the manga, and I think he was getting ready to make the movie oh, okay. uh, at that point. Uh, back in 1984, Miyazaki, among other things, was drawing cartoons for a Japanese modeling magazine. It really? still exists to this day, Model Graphics. I'm, I'm sure a lot of our customers buy uh, Model Graphics magazine from us every month. But Miyazaki was actually doodling, uh, doing these, these cute, cute little manga pages in Model Graphics because he was buddies with uh, the editor-in-chief of Model Graphics magazine. So every month there'd be like two or three pages, original artwork from Miyazaki, from that Miyazaki in the pages of a modeling magazine. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and after six or seven years of doing that, uh, they collected it all into a book, which we, we happen to have here. It's called uh, Miyazaki Hao no Zasso Noto. Um, and uh, Zasso Note, I think we, we translated this on our website as like Daydream Note. Uh, something, something like, like that. that. But it's basically just a collection of random bits uh, that he put together. Now this is actually rather interesting when, when you start looking at it, because when you think of, of Miyazaki movies, right, what mm -hmm. do you think of? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Um, I mean, Spirited Away, Kiki's Delivery Service, there's, there's a lot of uh, fantasy elements to it, and not just the world, but the tanks, the, the aircrafts, everything. Don't forget the food. And Weird the food. food. <laughs> Weird food, we're hearing <laughs> off camera here. Um, but yeah, well for me, when I think about it, it's always like a strong female protagonist. Oh yeah. That. You've always got like a strong female protagonist who gets involved in some fantasy or, or you know, mystery or, or, or whatever it is. But the first thing most people think of when they think of Miyazaki is maybe, you know, Totoro or, or something like that. And it's not probably tanks or, or, you know, weird bombing aircraft. But the thing is, it actually turns out that Miyazaki is a real military nerd. I mean, he's a total military <laughs> otaku uh, in Japanese, and he loves weapons and weapon systems. Um, and most of the pages that he doodled for the magazine was that kind of weird stuff. Uh, so as you thumb through this thing, and uh, I, I will also point out, throw in a little sales pitch here, uh, this book is still available. Uh, they've changed the cover in the newest edition. This is an old copy. Uh, but this book is still available and is available on our website as uh, uh, Hayao Miyazaki's Daydream Note. So look that up if you're interested. Um, but you have page after page of really funky original art, original cartoons, where he talks about, in some cases, existing weapon systems, has little comments about how they were great or how they were stupid, uh, how they were used. Uh, and he's populated it with all kinds of like cutaway drawings and, and weird stuff. It's really quite intriguing. Um, but it turns out that in his third time, the, the third time that he sat down and, and put together a few pages for this magazine, 
he decided to do a bit on tanks. And this is, this is episode number three here. And we got a bit on tanks. And he starts out by talking about crazy multi-turreted tanks. Now, when you think about tanks, usually there's just one big turret on the top of it, right? One big gun. Right, that rotates. And, he shoots. and, and that was pretty common, uh, of course, from World War II to present day. But when tank warfare first started in World War I, we still hadn't really figured it out. Uh, and there were some tanks that had like turrets on the left and right. Uh, and in between the wars, the British put together something called the Independent. There's a little sketch of it here that had like five turrets on it. You one big one in the center and four little ones around the outer edges. And these tanks were also really big uh, compared to modern tanks. Uh, and they would have like crews of, of up to 10 men, you know, inside these tanks to doing various things. It was, it was crazy. And on page two of this article, boom. There it is. Miyazaki came up with this completely fictional but entirely probable for the day, uh, bad guy number one, Akuyaku Ichigo. And here it is in the pages of an article dated right down here. It says 1984, December 3rd, 1984. Uh, Miyazaki Hayao drew this tank. Uh, and the interesting thing was, some of our uh, customers may already know, is actually this tank was released as a kid several years ago. Oh, really? Yes, it actually has been out before, and we just happen to have a copy right here. Ta-da! Ooh! Uh, this is the original release uh, of Akuyaku Ichigo from several years ago, uh, and I understand the manufacturer is still going to be making it, just uh, there's no inventory available at the moment oh, I see. Uh, of this. But in collaboration with another model company, they've now released this new version uh, of Akuyaku Ichigo. And what is different? Well, this new version is also shown in the pages of the book. It's got the short barrel, which he indicates was the initial version. So this is the short barrel version of Akuyaku Ichigo. The other differences from the kit, um, from the original release, is this box art. Now the, uh, the initial box art was basically a, a Miyazaki uh, illustration that yeah. he had done. This second one, uh, they went, they pulled out all the stops. This beautiful piece of art here is by none other than Yoshiyuki Takami who is one of the most famous box art illustrators in the history of like the Japanese modeling industry. Really? If you look at it, it's, it's, really, it's a really nice piece of artwork. Uh, so if you're familiar with uh, Japanese box art or any of the great names related to it, uh, Takani-san actually did this artwork, which was, I was shocked. You know, I looked at it and I said, that looks really good. And, and it's got, it says right here on the, on the box that it was done by Takani-san. <laughs> Takani-san is 85 years old. Oh he my. painted this as <laughs> an 85 year old <laughs> I was so looking for the pigs, a, I'm yeah, not gonna he's, lie. he's kind of a living legend. But I guess he didn't draw them in. That's more of uh, Hayao Miyazaki's style. The yes, pig. Uh, I don't know where it came from, but Miyazaki has this, this whole pig thing. In fact, uh, on the cover of, of the book here, uh, Miyazaki has portrayed himself uh, as a pig. Uh, right there, uh, which is why I guess when in the movies he eventually went to a pig protagonist for uh, Porco, Porco Rosso, Rosso yeah. which is what immediately I thought of when I oh, saw yeah, the yeah. pig. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got this this thing about pigs. I don't know where that came from, um, but now time for a little boast. Uh, when Porco Rosso came out, I actually had the privilege of interviewing Miyazaki myself. Really? Uh, yes, I, I've actually met him three times, and it was it was a privilege and an honor every time. Uh, and he is a little strange. And he smokes way too many cigarettes, and I really wish he would stop because we want him to stay healthy. <laughs> yes. Um, but he told me at the time uh, that his whole thing with uh, the pig or, or doing Porco Rosso is because he'd always wanted to illustrate, or I should say animate, a really good dogfight. And if you're into aircraft or dogfights and you haven't seen Porco Rosso, shame on you. Go rent it immediately <laughs> or see it on streaming if you can. Uh, it's a fascinating film. Uh, but back to our, our, our main subject matter. Um, do you build kits, Lindsay? Well, I've built Gumpla, and I've mm -hmm. built some Kotobukiya kits as well, but never a tank, uh, never aircraft. Mm -hmm. And this actually is going to require you to, to paint it if you want to make it look yeah. good. Have you, have you ever painted a model? Oh, no. I don't have airbrush You're equipment or anything fancy at home. Find it a little intimidating? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Well, this is, you know, the, the nice thing about a tank like this, uh, the number of parts is pretty, pretty typical for a tank kit. Uh, no special complexity in the assembly here. Um, but the cool thing is, is because it's a completely fictional thing, nobody's going to care how you paint it. And so just treat it like your own creative canvas. You know, if you, were, if you didn't want to do this sort of uh, quasi-German camouflage type of scheme they've got going here, uh, which would probably require uh, an airbrush to, to look, make it look good, uh, you could just paint it olive drab, which is like a green color, put a white star in the front of it, and you have like an American version of, you know, uh, from World War II oh. of Aki Aki Ichigo. Paint it Very pink. true. Paint, paint it pink, paint David it pink. said off camera. Yes. <laughs> I don't uh, know yeah, about It's pink. got a lot of uh, cool turrets and cool stuff. As I mentioned earlier, you know, this, uh, this particular tank is, is supposed to be huge. Um, 
the book uh, shows has an illustration here that really shows how how, how crazy it is. Um, Miyazaki drew this great cutaway illustration of the inside of the tank, uh, showing its several dozen uh, pig crew manning the various <laughs> stations. Uh, so that's actually quite amusing too uh, to check out this illustration. Uh, and the kid also, the one other change they've made is it comes with yes. like this boss bad guy who yes. he also has drawn off in the margins here. I was looking for him. I finally yeah, found yeah. him. So the old kit came with the pig crew, right? You get the crew. With and the this old one. And is this one the comes commander. With the boss. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so there's uh, several, there's at least three major changes then uh, from the previous edition of this kit. Uh, so lots of fun. I've seen several of these built up and they're a lot of fun to look at because they have all these turrets all over the place. You've got uh, several turrets on the tank itself and then like this uh, cupola thing that pops up, you know, like a periscope oh, to really? look around and, and all kinds of fun. Oh so yeah, there uh, it is. So if you want to have an exciting Miyazaki original, uh, on your shelf. Uh, this is a kit that we can't recommend highly enough. Uh, very unique. A very yeah. unique offering that should appeal to both military kit fans and anime uh, fans as well. Great stuff. So you got to build one for us. What? That would be <laughs> awesome. Maybe we have to find a space without cats in it first. You know, <laughs> tend to get in the way. We will have Akuyaku Ichigo short-barreled version. I definitely want to find time in my schedule for this. <laughs>